hell. <laughs> 1984 Chevrolet K30. We are replacing all of the switches in the steering column. We've got the, uh, <clears throat> what do we got? We got the neutral safety, sw safety switch. We've got the uh, turn signal switch. We've got the wiper switch. We have, oh, the uh, dimmer switch. Uh, we have the ignition switch. All of these switches that are attached to the steering column are being replaced because I don't want to ever touch the steering column ever again. So we're doing it all. And this is the first time I've gone through this. This is not an instructional video. This is my process going through this situation with this truck. So uh, let's uh, come along with me as I uh, uh, torture myself. I don't again. know if this steering wheel is actually what was supposed to come on it, but you just pull back and it pops off. It's just got that spring load, uh, that, that arm sticking up that uh, keeps it in there. So. I will detach that yellow wire that I'm presuming is for the horn. We uh, zipped off the uh, steering wheel nut. Lickety split. I pulled the steering wheel off, but uh, they have a host of different uh, pullers that you can use. So it has a blunt end on the end. So you take your, you've got the shaft running up through the center. It has a nut on it with some threads. Zip off the, uh, the nut and then the steering wheel is on splines. So you'll have to use some sort of puller. So these come in the kit with the puller and then those screw down into the holes uh, right there. That one screws in there. The other one screws in over here. Screw, screw, screw. And those obviously you've got your puller over the top of it and then put your screws down in there and tighten them down evenly. And then take uh, whatever your big crescent wrench, your socket, and uh, put this, make sure that this uh, shaft lines up with the uh, steering shaft uh, fairly squarely. And you can even leave the nut on the end of the steering shaft so you're not messing up the threads accidentally. So screw this down and it takes, I don't know, about two turns, three turns and then it will it'll be super firm but then the string will pop off so this is what i bought and it appears to be the right one so on the back it basically has the diagram of what that is right there and i'm hoping that that in uh, threads down onto the string shaft and uh, so then you just tighten the nut down i will put this on here and show you but that is the part number if you wish Okay, so can you see that ring down there? Um, so you just stick, thread this down onto the shaft and then um, take that wing nut and then uh, screw that down, which uh, in turn pushes the arm down onto that plastic piece, uh, revealing the ring. So I'm gonna take a little pick or something and I'm going to uh, attempt to get that ring off. Okay, so I've got that pick on the back side, so it's tapered. So you can see the um, split in the uh, ring, and it's just a wire ring. So just pick underneath it, and I am going to pick on the other side, and hopefully it slides up onto that shaft and off. So once you take your puller off, this is spring loaded, and it comes up and off of there like so with your ring and don't lose the ring your wire goes through the center and set that aside which i have not organized this worth of crap okay so now let's see if that pops off there like it does Take your spring out. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way. Um, okay. I think we need to take the screws out. There should be three. 
but I only see two. Let me do a little more investigation here. Okay, so you had your screw up here, which was visible when I had the turn signal lever in the whatever down position or up position. And then you've got that screw there, and then you need to take this off to reveal the screw underneath there. Unscrew your hazard light. There's a Phillips in the end of it. You've taken your three screws out of your turn signal switch. You've taken that out. You have this uh, screw, that one right there. Take that out. And that's a special screw that has, there's no threads on the end of it. And then turn your ignition forward and that pops right out. Place that over there. You've got your turn signal stock that just pops right out. That was already loose. If you have cruise, cruise control, there will be a wire come out of here, so be careful with that. And then you have your you got a, uh, screw down there. You have a screw down in there. You have a screw down in there. Uh, you have a screw right there. You can loosen those up. And then before we even get got to that, I took this plastic panel off. And then this has a brake controller on it that's hardwired so I can't, or hard lined. So I can't take this away, but this was up here like this, underneath the plastic part with the screws. Pull that down. And then you have these two bolts. There's actually four of them. And I've already taken these loose. And then you have your your two nuts underneath there to take out <laughs> that let's get the other one hopefully with uh, one hand ah. That out, and then your steering column will drop down like so. But you have a plastic, where the hell did the plastic thing go? There's a plastic thing. Oh, this right here. So you've got this plastic thing that pulls down and out uh, and then you have your this is your turn signal I've already unplugged these and that plugs into the plug that is right there and then that was sitting up in a plastic bracket that I took this plug out of <clears throat> and you've got to get a screwdriver in both front and back to pull your plug out of there. And then I have put some uh, electrical tape around the end of it to make it a little bit more like an arrow. So it will pull up and into there. Okay, so, and then you have, which I didn't know it was there, but you have this little wire with the loop on the end of it okay so that goes to your indicator for uh, your park drive reverse whatever so your little arrow has a spring on it and then it goes all the way over to here so it's in park right now so it would be all the way over there because the shifter is in park and then when you move the shifter to drive or whatever it may be 
this swivels back and forth causing that wire to move back and forth as well so i didn't even know that that was there when i dropped the steering column down so um somehow i'm gonna have to get this little wire up and through that little wheel or that little plastic thing and back onto the hook so and when i initially took the bracket down off of here this the steering column stayed in place so i came around into the engine compartment and uh i'll try to do this without okay let me go around okay so you should see those uh the two nuts We've got one right there, and we've got one over there. Loosen those two nuts, and then you have your um, your uh, shifter linkage from your automatic shifter. So pull the cotter pin out of the back side of that, and then that pops out. Like so, and don't lose the plastic thing that's inside the shifter thing there, shifter arm, and then you can go back inside. Sorry, this thing is all over the place. You can go back inside and then you have six of these screws holding this plate so that screw hole goes to that screw hole and this is sitting you can see where the rounded top so the rounded portion of that black metal uh plate is screwed into there with six screws and that's it so then your steering column will drop all the way down like it is and like i said before when i first took that initial bracket off it would not drop down so pro possibly it will drop down just with the uh, removal of that bracket okay so from here let's uh, see if this will slide out with me holding the so we've got that coming out and then slide it up into there like so and then it should come right up like so okay so set that aside so here's the situation you've got your ignition right there and then you have the rod that goes up to the ignition. So this rod is attached at the ignition. There's like a little gear in there that turns back and forth, which act activates the ignition. So on the other side, you have your high beam, which the rod is somehow inside of that high beam switch or dimmer switch or whatever you call it. The rod comes up here and it is not attached. It is, it goes up into your switch. Um, I think where the, the nut that holds the, uh, the actual switch on is uh, the rod goes up and through there. But I'm not for sure. Like I said, this is the first time I've taken this thing apart. I am gonna replace all of these switches. I'm gonna replace the wiper switch I am replacing the, uh, I've already said this at the beginning, but anyway, so we've got that. And then we have, if you can see back there, this white rounded plastic thing is your neutral safety switch right there. So there's a plug that goes into that. I'm going to replace that too. So this has uh, plastic snaps on the bottom of it. I'll actually show you what it, what it looks like. 
And I've already placed the, the that is a new turn signal switch. So I have all the switches over here. I have the wiper switch. They did not have an AC Delco um, option for the wiper switch. We have the ignition switch. And then we have safety switch so that yellow arm goes down into a slot in the steering column so when you shift the gear and the column goes back and forth that yellow thing moves back and forth and I also don't have any reverse lights so I'm hoping that this will solve that but it appears that uh, this snaps down in there so I might possibly have to break that out uh, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Uh, interrupter, neutral safety switch. And then we have the... I don't know what happened to the ignition box. I think that's inside the truck. But anyway, this is the new ignition. But that was super easy to get out. And I believe that is possibly... AC Delco, but I'm not sure. I just don't want to have to do this again. I don't want to have to drop the steering column and go through all this bullshit again. So here we are. We are going to attempt to uh, replace all this stuff. Um, I'll probably not be holding the camera, but I will uh, come in afterwards. And I'm waiting uh, on the dimmer switch. That's supposed to be in at four o'clock. So I will show you the part number of that when it comes in. This is not terribly pertinent, pertinent, but if you have to replace this, so you've got the two, you've got a nut there, you've got a nut back there, so this, both of these switches are attached in the same place. So um, this is, the column has to come down to get to these screws or these nuts. So, excuse me. Okay, we're gonna attempt to unscrew that and get these switches out of here. Uh, yada yada. So you've got this is an eight millimeter, and then this nut is a three eighths on there, and that's a stud. So then take this off of the stud. And that rod is in there. And then you have another nut on the back side of that, which I'm presuming is possibly. No, it's not. Not three eighths. Let's see if it's. Uh, And that one is, uh, what is that, eight millimeter? What did I just say? Whatever I just said at the beginning there, that's what it is. I don't know. I don't really care. So we will loosen that. Excuse me, I shouldn't be saying that bad word. Okay, so we take that out. I can't see, you can't see. Take that out of there. Looks like that. I don't know what the focus is going on there. And then both of these are loose now. So let me figure out how that rod goes into that ignition switch so I can get it out of there and then unplug them and I'll be back.
Okay, so when you separate those, you've got the rod that runs underneath, and then it goes into that slot. And there is a hole right in the center of that. So that's where the rod goes. Now I'm going to unplug both of those plugs. Okay, so I've unplugged both of those switches. Both, there's this is two separate switches that go to the ignition, and then you've got uh, whatever you've got three arms that you press in on. There's nothing on the back side. The dimmer switch, the rod just goes right in, just pulls right out of there, and. Uh, that just has, has two arms, and then that pulls out. So there are the two switches, and the arm goes into there. And now we are going to attempt to pull this piece up and off to get the get to the uh, winch, winch or the uh, the wiper switch. Let's see how this goes. Because originally I could not pull it off. It would not come up, it would only come up so far. And I'm presuming that's because this rod was attached to the ignition and that's why it wouldn't come up any farther. So let's see what happens. Because this rod just slides in and out and I could probably pull that all the way out. But let's see if we can get this, uh, this top piece off. Okay, so this, have, I have just slid this out and off of here. So this plastic piece needs to come off and you can see the rod coming through there. And then you can't see the rod over there. So let me get this plastic piece off. It should just snap off of here. This kind of scares me because uh, that arm needs to get up in there in some sort of uh, particular way. And I'm presuming the rod is attached to the end of that. Um, there's a screw on the end of here, a Phillips screw that I need to take off to get this thing out of here. And the background noise is because it's raining out. And this is a metal roof. So once you take that screw out, pull that back, and you see the rod is going through the center of the bolt that holds that switch in. And then there is your switch and wires. Uh, from other videos I saw, there was something attached to the back of this. But that is not present in this one. So, so this is 9 16 and it was not very tight. inside there to see why that's not coming out okay so you have to pivot it down and pull it out like so now I'm gonna pull the wires up and through there the, after I unplug them also, so this had intermittent intermittent wipers. So there was a box that went in between these two. So the wires or the wipers, they were not. Uh, it's a long story with the wipers, and that's why I'm repla replacing the switch. But anyway, so they they turned on and they wouldn't turn off. So I took the intermittent box out and then plugged the two ends together, which it essentially makes it into a two-speed with no intermittent, intermittent. So the wiper switch for intermittent wipers is $250. The two-speed wiper switch was, uh, I believe, 59 or 69 dollars so i just picked because you can't get 
there is no reproduction of this box that go the inter the uh, pulse or whatever you call it box that goes in between these two ends. So um, we're just making this into a two-speed, and I'm hoping that the two-speed switch is applicable with this. And then there's no reason why it shouldn't be. So let's. Uh, I think I'm probably going to have to put tape on it to do the same thing as I did with the uh, with the turn signal because that feels kind of tight. Here, I'm going to put some tape on there just in case. Okay, so I put some tape on the end of it to make it kind of like an arrow. So shove it up in there and it should pull out like so that would seem to be a little bit snug so hopefully it goes back down in there the new one that is okay so the switch goes in there just like the old one came out obviously and then get your your nut in there and tighten that down and then your oh Jesus, and then your um, your rod will go up in the center of that nut, and then it stops where that uh, arm is that st is sticking out there. So I'm going to feed the wires on this one are a lot shorter than the other one. So I'm hoping that uh, what I'm really hoping is that I can get this shit back in there. That's why I'm really hoping. Okay, so I've taken a piece of baling wire and I've run it down the bottom here because I was having a hard time getting the plug down into there. So uh, we are going to attempt to pull that right through like that. Okay, so and then that goes like that. Except that slides down into there like that. And I'm hoping that I can manipulate this cover back down onto uh, this thing, the bottom portion, and everything lines up. Who knows? Neutral safety switch goes like that. The plug in is on the front facing the steering wheel. So I just took a screwdriver. And uh, where are we at? That's that white thing up against the firewall there. I just took a screwdriver on the bottom and it popped right out. We need to make sure that the arrow is in the same place. it looks like it is. Looks like a different shape. And possibly the end of it has been pushed over like it has. So I don't know how that functions if it's pushed over like a so. So maybe that's the way it's designed. I have no clue. But anyway, I'll pop that back in and plug it back in. Uh, the steering column is together, but it was kind of a major pain to get everything lined up, and I'm still not sure if it's uh, where it's supposed to be. I've left this cover off. I'm going to pull it back out. If it actually, if the ignition functions and everything is functioning, uh, then I will pull it back out slightly and put this uh, uh, cover back on there like it's supposed to be. I might not put the screw in there just in case I need to pull that back off. Who knows? Okay, so we have loosely placed the ignition in the proper place, and then the rod goes into the slot. So make sure the slot is in the same place on the new switch, and then slide the rod over the top of it, uh, placing your stud in the back there, and then putting your uh, your dimmer switch and rod into there 
and um, then you've got your turn signal switch so just feed it along the bottom below there and then uh, it pushes right through there lickety split and then you can plug that into your uh, turn signal wiring and then we're going to stick the ignition in there and we're going to see if it functions okay so you've got your ignition ignition switch rod that comes down and then that engages into your ignition switch this slides back and forth and you can see where the rod has been sliding back and forth so when you take this cone off all of this stuff gets disheveled so this rod comes up and then it attaches to this uh, flat piece that has, uh, uh, it, it meshes with a gear that's inside of the steering column. So those that gear that you see with the teeth there, that thing moves around if it doesn't have the ignition switch rod piece lined up with it on top. And the focus sucks. Um, so that rod needs to run over the top of that gear where the teeth are in order for it to engage. So I have spent quite a while trying to get those two meshed up and the steering column put back down to where it's supposed to go. So when you put the when you put this cone back down on here, <clears throat> and it seats down, put your ignition switch in there and turn the ignition switch and see if the rod goes back and forth. Because if the rod doesn't go back and forth, that means that the gears and the rod piece are not meshed up. Because for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why the rod wasn't moving. That's because that uh, the teeth on the gear were flipped around and on the bottom, not engaging with the uh, rod piece if that makes any sense whatsoever so okay now I'm on to the next step so this should be I should be able to uh, line the rod up and where is the ignition switch for God's sakes what the hell happened to it <laughs> okay so here's the old ignition switch so the rod goes down inside of can't see it because there's no light shining on it. The rod goes down into that space that you see right there. So when your ignition rod, um, so the ignition switch goes down uh, like this. The rod, the ignition switch sits down on top of the rod where the end is sticking up, which you can't see down in there, but there, there's the rod is end is sticking up. So it goes down into that slot, into that hole. So when you turn the ignition switch over, it gets to the point where it almost starts. You've got that, whatever, half inch worth of uh, where it springs back and forth. Well, th this, ignition switch has a spring inside of it so that causes the key to once you start it the key springs back into the run position so um so yeah so you need to make sure that your ignition switch is lined up and in that position so your key um springs back if that makes any sense whatsoever Okay, I'm going to continue on and uh, button this up. This has been a test of my patience. Okay, so with your key turned forward just before where it just before it pushes against the ignition switch with the spring loaded and then where it turns forward and then turns back into the run position. And then you've got your stud in, if 
you can see, so you got that stud holding the box in. So you've got a little bit of uh, back and forth adjustment on the rod or on this box. It goes back and forth a little bit. So hold your box and then turn the key to where it's supposed to be engaging the ignition, the spring-loaded part. So turn the key all the way forward and hold the box at the same time and get it in the proper place where the key turns until the rod bottoms out in the spring-loaded position on the ignition box and then set your screws. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. You're just basically, it's kind of like adjusting your throttle, I guess. Um, you're just making it so that rod bottoms out at the same time that the switch bottoms out on the spring-loaded portion of it. I guess that's some way to put it. And also, make sure that the rod, your uh, high beam rod, is touching the arm like right now it is not you can see that gap in there so that means i need to pull the uh i need to loosen the screws and pull this back in the slots so the rod is touching the arm inside the steering column we are um all put back together i mean except for all the ridiculousness underneath there um, one big piece of advice I would give you is when you take the ignition switch out, look inside the hole there with your flashlight and see how the gear and the uh, ignition rod is situated. Because the, the top of the ignition rods has, uh, whatever, has splines in it which mesh up with the gear that is behind your ignition switch <clears throat> and that needs to be in a certain uh, orientation to work because I fiddle uh, effed around for a ton of time because I didn't look in there to see how it was originally situated the gear <clears throat> and it has to be in a specific way so when you pull this top piece off here that arm is going to come out and away from the gear on your ignition and cause you much much headache if uh, you don't uh, take a look see maybe take a picture of it with your cell phone or something before you go in there or before you pull this thing off of here so this has taken a lot longer than i thought and that piece, uh, it has a little hook on it that has, was broke off. And then the actual arrow is broke off as well. Because when I dropped the steering column, it crashed into the side of there and broke the thing off. But the line is still there. But you can order this whole situation from uh, your local parts house. So in order to replace that, this needs to come off. Uh, the plastic face. So I am going to do that at a later date. And those are super cheap. Those are pretty cheap. So, um, yeah, everything is functioning. I just need to tidy up all the uh, ridiculousness down there. And, uh, I guess another successful project, a lot more, uh, tedious than I thought it was going to be. Thanks for watching.